Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord is with us. Amen. Amen. We call him Jehovah Shama. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the Lord that is present. Amen. 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 Jehovah Shama. Amen. Amen. You know, that name has made a lot of sense in the last two weeks. Amen. Amen. <laughs> you know, when we receive a revelation from the word of God, it changes, it strengthens our faith and changes our lives. Amen. Amen. I became to understand when we call him Jehovah Shama, Amen. the one who is present, where? In our midst, where? In our situations, where? <laughs> in our pain, where? In our problems, where? In our need. Amen. This is why he's called Jehovah Shama, the God that is present. Amen. Amen. So he is present with us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And praise the Lord. Amen. 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 What a joy to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. No wonder why the Bible says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. 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 No matter the difficulties, but the joy of him in our lives strengthens us. Amen. Amen. And gives us hope that we will face our tomorrow. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Let's open up our Bibles and read from the book of Acts of Apostles. Acts chapter 8. We read from verse 4 down to verse 13. The Bible reads, Therefore those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed, and lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. Amen. Verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon, who previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great. <laughs> to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. But when they believed Philip as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. Then Simon himself also believed. Ooh, interesting. He preached until the witch believed. Amen. Until the demons trembled. Amen. Until the devil was attacked. Amen. This is the power that we are lacking in church today. Amen. We can no longer preach to the witches and get them to be saved. <laughs> Amen. When witches come into our church service, we are all trembling. Amen. <laughs> Instead, the witches should, when they make a mistake coming in this place, they should be trembling. As soon as they enter in that door, they should feel that this is not a comfortable place. I can't sit here. But they come in and sit and relax and enjoy their lives. <laughs> and to some degrees, they begin disturbing our lives even in the work of God. Amen. But God help us. Let's continue reading the word of God. Verse 13. Then Simon himself also believed, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip, 
and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which were done. Amen. Let's pray for the reading of the word of God. Father, we thank you for your word that is alive and powerful. We depend alone on you, the author and the finish of our faith. Father, we thank you for your word this morning. May you make it alive in our lives, that our faith is strengthened through your word, that our lives are touched to the better, that the anointing of the Spirit of God move upon your word in our lives and in this place. We resist whatever is of the devil against this word in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray that you manifest your power, your presence in this place. We decrease that you increase in our lives and in this place. Bless us as we hear your word. This we pray in the powerful name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. We began preaching last Sunday that God is always with us in our pain. Amen. And we were preaching to say that we should not be tempted to believe, to think that when we go through pain, God is not present. Amen. The presence of pain is not the absence of God. That's what we were sharing last Sunday. And we continued saying that God can do some of his best work in our pain. Because he causes us to go through this process in order to get the best of us. Amen? Through the process of taking us through a pressure sometimes. And we say that if whatever we are going through, what is pain or pressure is coming from God, that strengthens us and turns that pressure into power within us. Amen. And in many situations, as we preached last Sunday, that uh, many times when God is taking us through the process of pain, through the process of pressure and crushing, he's just taking us through a process of practicing what he will be doing with us in the future. Amen? So we should not feel frustrated when we are going through such moments, such times, because they serve a purpose. Amen? Because God is present. Amen? At any time he takes us through that process. Amen. And our faith comes out of our experiences with God. Our faith grows, our faith is strengthened out of the experiences that God takes us through in life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And in many times, we feel like going through a tunnel with no way out. Have you felt that in your life sometimes? When you come across situations and you feel like you are in a very long tunnel that you can't see the way out. You don't know where you came from and you can't see the way out. You've exhausted all your own resources and you feel tired with life. Amen? And you feel like there is great pressure on you that you can no longer manage. But... It is that time when you feel that kind of a pressure upon your life that it should be the opportunity for you to turn unto God and cry unto him and let him know of what is taking place in your life. Amen? Amen. It is that time. Amen? And the good thing with God is that, hallelujah, even... If, if even with that pressure with God, if God still has a plan with your life, that pressure will not crush you. That pressure will not destroy you as long as God still has a plan with your life. Amen. 
We said last Sunday that grapes are nice fruits, but in order to get the best out of the grapes, you, they've got to go through the crushing process. Oh! <laughs> I love the fact that we said that the best part of us is still lying within us, and only pressure will get it out of us. Oh! Amen! <laughs> Amen. It is that hell. It is that I'm no longer the pressure. Amen. No matter the pressure that you are experiencing. Amen. If God still has a plan with your life, that pressure is saving a purpose. Amen. Because that pressure will not crush you. And the Bible says in Job chapter 14 verse 7 that, it, that, that there is even hope for a tree when it is cut off because that tree shall blossom again. Oh! <laughs> we don't like the cutting. We don't enjoy the cutting. But Job says in his persecution, he compares his life to a tree that is being cut. But you, oh! Oh! There is heavy anointing in this place, Church of God. Because it is good for a tree, after it has lived for 10, 20 years, it is good for that tree to be cut off in order for it to blossom again. Oh, hallelujah! <laughs> oh, Jesus! Amen! Amen! Some of us have done agriculture, we understand. And we call this in agriculture, it is pruning. You are being pruned so that you can bear more fruits. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Though the tree is cut off, but it will blossom again. And a believer is likened to a tree. Amen. Hallelujah. A believer is likened, is compared to a tree. Whenever you are cut off, whenever you are pressed it down, amen, God is taking you through that process so that in due time, he will cause you to blossom again. He will cause you to flourish again because he is wanting to get more fruits out of you. Amen. 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 So that he's preparing you so that your family, your community, your nation will come and eat from your fruits. Amen? Amen? Whether f if, if it is at a spiritual level, physical level, financial level, intellectual level, at whatever level God wants you to be a blessing, God will make sure. He, and we say that he does not set us for failure. He sets us for success and victory. Amen? Victory is not in the end result, as we said, it is in what we learn along the way. Amen. Amen! Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And we need to understand, as we were talking about Abraham last week, that God will test you before he promotes you. Amen? God will test you before he promotes you. Amen. Amen. Oh, Jesus, Spirit of the living God, help me share this word. Amen. Now, we've read this morning from the book of Acts of Apostles. The book of Acts engages us in a discussion the book of Acts starts a discussion that defines and establishes the New Testament church in a very powerful way. It helps us to begin understanding the unfolding plan of God that he had in his mind when he sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to come on this earth to die and to be resurrected again. Amen. If you need to understand the purpose why Jesus has come, you really need to love the book of Acts of Apostles. 
because the Bible says in the book of 1 John 3, 8, that the Son of Man has been manifested to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. To set the oppressed free. To set the captives free. Amen. And Jesus himself says that the anointing, the spirit of God is upon him to set the captives free. And to declare the year of the favor of God. Now if you need to understand these divine purposes, you need to begin understanding the revelations that are hidden in the book of Acts of Apostles. Amen. Amen. And I would like to compare the book of Acts of Apostles to the book of Genesis. <laughs> you know, Genesis introduces us to the New Testament. Amen. And to me this morning, I would like to compare the book of the Acts of Apostles to the book of Genesis. I understand that you ask me a question. No, Pastor, Acts of Apostles is not the, 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 the introduction of the New Testament. I understand there is Matthew. There are the Gospels. Matthew, Mark, uh, uh, Luke, and John. I know that very much. Amen. But the Bible says in the book of Hebrews that the Testament does not come into force until the testator has died. Hey, oh, Spirit of the living God, help me deliver this message. I'm feeling a very strong anointing this morning. Now, amen. amen. Jesus has come, died, and, and, and established his church. Amen. 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 But we don't begin seeing the manifestation, the work of the church on this earth until Jesus is departed. And the apostles that he anointed begin, amen, to preach the gospel, begin to work in the mission that God, Jesus Christ, has trained them for, has called them for. Amen? Hallelujah! Amen. So the book, of, and, and no wonder why Bible scholars, amen, argue that the, 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 the book of Acts of Apostles should be called the book of the Holy Spirit. This is what theologians, Bible scholars argue, that it should have been called the, 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 the book of the Holy Spirit, the Acts of the Holy Spirit. But because the Holy Spirit chose men, used the men to do what he did, in, at that point in time, he used the apostles. Hence, this book is called the Acts of Apostles. Amen. 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 Now when Jesus is departed, hallelujah, the disciples begin the ministry. Amen. But I want you to hold on to the idea. We are continuing from where we left last Sunday that God is always with us in our pain. Amen. I want us to hold that idea, amen, as we continue sharing the word of God. Amen. Now, as the, uh, the disciples are ministering the word of God, amen, and th as you know, amen, they started from Jerusalem, amen, and I think, I understand that Jerusalem is the place way, amen, they experienced the power of God. Amen? I'm guessing that this is why they are attached to Jerusalem. Amen? Because it, it, it is their mother, I don't know, do I call it their mother church? Or their mother place? Or their mother land? Amen? We all of us feel nostalgic. Amen? Hallelujah. Even if you come from a village like myself, I still love my village. When, oh, <laughs> if you haven't been there, you feel like you are missing something. You f and in most situations, you feel like even when you are going through hardships and problems, you remember the ways from parents and comfort and friends and the community life. You feel like if I was in the village, I could have been helped. Amen. I wonder why the disciples are clinging to Jerusalem. But you see, the problem is they were clinging to the place that they experienced God more than clinging to God himself. 
Then they built, they developed a tradition that answers solutions, miracles, will only happen in Jerusalem. <laughs> it is as if we are trying to build monuments in a place where God is, is, is asking us to have a movement. Now, Jerusalem becomes very interesting. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen. Amen! Jesus! But I, I needed to say something a little bit about the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen! And many of the challenges we are experiencing in our own lives, in our nation. Amen! We need the power of the Holy Spirit in order to move through what we are going through. Amen? There is no way we're going to come out of whatever we are calling challenges today if the Spirit of God is not at work. We need Him to be working through us, within us, with us, and for us to see God delivering us and ushering us into His promises that He made for our lives. Because many of us are being afflicted by the devil, and there is powerful strongholds from the devil trying to hold us back from moving, from entering, from enjoying, from receiving the promises that God has planned for our lives. But we need the power of God to break these strongholds so that we remain free and fly with the Spirit of God into the realm of the Spirit of God and begin receiving the promises. Of God. Amen. The manifestation, the fulfillment of the promises of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. No wonder why the Holy Spirit is, is very important, is an important figure. Amen. In our lives. Amen. We need to be his friend. We need to be connected to the spirit of the living God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, <laughs> now the Bible says that the, the disciples, amen, are dwelling in Jerusalem. Amen. So I think, in my understanding, I'm trying to think that because they experienced the power of God in Jerusalem, they think that they should be operating from Jerusalem. Amen and sort of getting things, the mission done while they are seated, while they are attached, while they are clinging to Jerusalem, amen? But I'm trying to think and believe that God is wanting these people, amen, to make a move so that they can begin spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth to the nations. No wonder why the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 9, that, behold, I will do a new thing. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. God will break the system. Amen. So that you may come out. And go about doing what he is calling you to do. And go about doing what he wants you to be doing at the right time. Amen. And at the right place. And one of the ways, brethren, that God, amen, will get you to move out of a place, out of a situation. God will do something new that in many situations, God will... Oh... God will do something that we often do not like. Amen? God will cause us, God will do a new thing through by bringing persecution. So that we can make a move. Amen? God will bring rejection so that we can make the next move in our lives with him. Now, God will bring persecution to give you direction. Hallelujah. God will bring rejection to give you direction. 
Amen. You begin wondering why people are no longer loving you. In, even in your own family, even in your workplace, even in your, oh, your own group that you loved so dear. You begin experiencing rejection. You begin experiencing persecution. Amen. I'm trying to see this as a way of God to make you move to the next level of your life. Amen. Amen. Now, if you read in this story, in the book of 2 Kings chapter 7, amen, you find the story of the four leprous men, amen, who were living at the, um, at the gate of the city of Samaria. Amen. And as we understand in the Old Testament, because these people had leprosy, they were not allowed to live in the city because they were deemed unclean. So they were rejected. Amen. They went through this kind of persecution. Amen. And they were put as outside of the city. Hallelujah. But I want, I, I love what the Bible does. Amen. I love what the Bible does, amen? The Bible says that as they lived at the city, and this is one of the ways to show you how God brings persecution on your way, how God allows rejection so that he might give you direction, so that he might lead you in the right way. It, it, it's like what the Bible says, amen, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 11, that as God stayed as the ego stays up its nets, so God led his people, amen, from Egypt into the promised land. Amen. In order for the, the ego to get the, 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 uh, the babies to move out, to fly out of the nets, the ego stays the nets. Amen. Brings confusion in the nets, makes it look messy, so that the babies begin feeling uncomfortable and begin learning how to fly. Amen. Amen. And in many times and situations, God takes us through this process. Amen. He stays up our nets. He shakes us up in order to bring us up to the next level in our lives. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as these four lepros men were sitting and living outside at the gate of the city, the Bible says that it is through these lepros men that God brought the deliverance in from the enemies of the people of Israel in Samaria. Because as they lived there, it came a day when they said, look, we are living here. If we go, we are not allowed to go into the city, and if we go to the Syrian army, they will kill us. Amen? But they said it's better we just go and present ourselves to the Syrian army. If they kill us, they kill us. If they let us live, we shall live. Amen? And the Bible says that as they were going to the camp of the Syrian army, that go, that, 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 oh, that even before they were there, that God caused the enemies to hear like the sound of chariots and the sound of a big army coming against them. So they fled and left everything that they had. And when the four leprous men arrived in the camp, they found that the camp was empty. Then they started plundering things, gathering things, eating until they were full to capacity. And they asked them a question, said that we are not doing a, a good thing. Let us go and bring news to the city, to the king. Amen. Amen. God used these people's rejection and persecution to bring about solution to the city of Samaria. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know we don't like persecution. No one of us would ever like or enjoy persecution or rejection because it hurts. Amen. When you are rejected from the people you love, from the people you want to hang around with, from the situations and the things you want to have with you all the time, it is very hateful. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah! Now, let's go back and begin exploring the text we have read. Amen? Now, the Bible says that, amen, as persecution arose, amen, 
in the church, against the church in Jerusalem, that the disciples began being scattered, amen, into the surrounding cities, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And here we come to hear about this man of Philip. Amen. The, oh, the Bible says that when persecution arose, that they could no longer stay in Jerusalem, that amongst the other disciples, Philip also left and he traveled and he went down to Samaria. Amen. God, amen, brought persecution to give direction to Philip. Now, when, so now when the Bible speaks about Samaria, I began thinking about the story of Jesus. Then I'm wondering if God had some unfinished business in Samaria that needed to be completed. It's just a question that I was asking myself, amen? Because you read in the book of John chapter 4, verse 23, when Jesus is in tracks, and you need to understand that Jesus spent the whole day here at the well waiting for this prostitute woman. This not... This was not a businesswoman. This was not a politician or a great woman from the city. Because the Bible says that when Jesus' disciples returned and they noticed that this man might be hungry because he spent his day here. And Jesus spent his whole day just waiting for a desperate des a, 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 a prostitute woman. Amen. And the Bible says that as he was talking, speaking to this Samaritan woman, that Jesus said to her that woman, the hour is coming, and it has now come, that the true worshipers will worship the Father in truth and in the Spirit. Amen. <laughs> oh, I'm wondering whether God had unfinished business in Samaria. I'm trying to link this story and to what Philip is doing in Samaria, amen, and see if we are going to have any connection between these two stories, amen. Now, Jesus says to the woman that the hour is coming, but now is. That's a little bit confusing, amen. If I'm talking to you and then I tell you that the hour is coming, but it is now here, it's a little bit confusing, <laughs> I'm trying to understand that Jesus is saying to the woman that the hour is now because I am here talking to you about the, and, and you are receiving salvation of your soul. Amen. But the hour is coming, which means that the manifestation of what I'm doing with you right now here is on its way coming. Because, hey! Not only that, it's only going to be who are going to receive salvation from this city, but many are going to receive salvation and they will be worshiping God in truth and in the spirit. Amen. Oh, hallelujah! God brought about persecution to bring direction to Philip. Amen. No wonder why I need to be coming back to this point that God is always in our pain. Amen. Hallelujah. Pain sometimes, amen, gives us, tells us that, amen, God is around us. We should not be allowing the devil to tempt us that when we are experiencing hardship that God has left us. Amen. 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 God is always with us. Amen. Now the Bible says that Philip went down to Samaria. <laughs> Amen. And the Bible says that as he began preaching the word of the kingdom of God, that signs and wonders began unfolding, began manifesting, that miracles began taking place. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I don't want you, brethren, to lose the point that how Philip left Jerusalem, went down to Samaria, because he, he went there for a specific purpose. Amen. Persecution was not an enjoyable thing for the 
disciples here. But there was a purpose attached to their persecution. Amen? Now, when he gets to Samaria, Philip begins preaching the gospel with power, with the demonstration of the power of the Holy Spirit, that miracles began taking place. And signs and wonders began taking place. Amen? He becomes the preacher of the gospel in a very powerful way. Hallelujah. 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 No wonder why I said that the book of Acts introduces us, uh, uh, brings us to see how the New Testament church should be operating, should be working. It is designed, it is meant that we as the church in this time, we should be operating under the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Preaching the gospel with power to see nations, communities, people, families coming to Jesus Christ of Nazareth as we preach the gospel. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Now Philip is preaching the gospel. Philip is preaching the gospel and miracles are taking place. Amen. No wonder why persecution arose. So that people like Philip could left, could leave Jerusalem going in the surrounding areas like Samaria to accomplish what God has started doing there. <laughs> Amen. God said to the woman at the well in Samaria that the hour is coming and it is now that the true worshipers will worship me in truth and in spirit. Amen. 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 I'm saying that this is very confusing. This statement is confusing. The hour is coming, but it is now here. Very confusing. <laughs> oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus is simply telling the woman that it is the hour is now here because now... You, you see, this woman had confusion about religion when she's talking about oh, we people used to worship at the mountain, you Jews in Jerusalem. It's not about the place. She was confused about what religion meant and how to do worship. No wonder why Jesus is telling her that the hour is now because you are receiving salvation for your soul. And now you begin to understand what is worship and how to worship and only to worship the true God. But the hour is coming for your city. Amen. No wonder why God is sending people like Philip to Samaria to, 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 to complete work that was started. Amen. And miracles are happening. Miracles are happening. Brethren, God is always in your pain. Don't be frustrated when you see things are not working out and you begin being disappointed that God has abandoned you. God is, has, always, has promised that he will always be with us in our times. Amen. 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 Now the Bible says that he, Philip begins preaching the gospel and miracles are taking place and the people are believing in the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. If he could have stayed in Jerusalem, these multitudes here could not have received the Christ. So God had to push him out of his comfort zone through persecution so that he may he move to Samaria and begin preaching the gospel. I need to keep emphasizing that God is always in your pain. Try to see God out of every situation that he's taking you through. Amen. And try to start enjoying the process that God is taking you through. Now the Bible says that. Amen. The Bible says that. The Bible says that as many began believing in Jesus Christ of Nazareth, as they saw signs and wonders through the gospel that Philip is preaching. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, this is what I love, that there was great joy in all the city. <laughs> oh, I love this. That there was great joy in the city. Oh. oh. There is great joy, brethren. I'm not sure if you are still seeing a problem here. 
out of this joy. But there is still Simon around. <laughs> There is great joy in the city, but there is still Simon around in this city. Amen. You know, the devil does not mind us having joy as long as we don't challenge his dominion and his authority. <laughs> the devil does not see it a problem for me to get busy with life, to work, to work seven days, 24 hours a day. Get money, he, he, and, and I'm happy that I'm earning a lot. The devil has no problem with that. As long as I'm not challenging his dominion and his authority, he will let me go that way. Because he, the devil understands that in the end of the day, when I work seven days a week, I'll start developing back pain, and that money will go back to chemists and doctors to pay for my back pain and medication. He will let me do that. He will let me fly in my craziness, thinking that getting busy for life is the way to go about life. <laughs> because me getting busy with life does not hurt the devil. <laughs> does not disturb him. <laughs> because the devil knows that the more you... Are, ooh, the more life is leaving you with no time to fellowship, to draw near God, the devil knows that this is a prey. This one I can catch any time I want to. <laughs> the money that is coming, the salary that is coming every fortnight, I know I can put a hand on this. <laughs> Have you seen people? <laughs> You've worked for 20 years, and you, you, so when I come to you that as your pastor, I am broke. Oh, the muso, I need 5,000. You can't borrow me 5,000 after you've worked for 20 years. <laughs> you can't even buy a suit for your pastor. $500. Uh, <laughs> is that fair? Ah, thank you, sister. God bless you. That is not fair. Hallelujah! <laughs> Amen! <laughs> Amen! No, don't worry. I'm not expecting you to be buying suits for me, man. <laughs> I'm just joking. Hallelujah! Amen! Amen. Now, the devil knows that. <laughs> he doesn't mind us having joy. As long as we do not challenge his dominion and his power and his authority, he will leave us live into our foolishness. As long as we do not take up his territory, he has no problem with that. <laughs> now, there is still a problem here. There is still a problem in this story here. The people are believing. The people are seeing great miracles. But Simon is still hanging around. <laughs> oh, and, and, and I love how God uses men. Amen. The Bible says that God is only sending one man against the whole city. <laughs> he did not send a group. He did not send a leadership. He only sent one man against the whole city. I, I, I'm always amazed how God uses always one person. When he wanted to create men, he used one man. He used Adam. When he, wanted, when he wanted to choose his people, he used one man. He used Abraham. When he wanted to deliver his people out of bondage in Egypt, he used one man. He used Moses. Somebody, can you say with me, let me be the one. Oh, you are doubting this? Oh, let me be the one. God is always after a man, after one person. Amen? 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 He may not require, because as Pastor Samuel said the other day about this servant of God who says that with God, me with God, we are the majority. Even if the whole world with God, even if the whole world Come against me with God, we are the majority. We are the most powerful. Amen. This is why God is always after Amen. Amen. No wonder why the Bible says that if God is with us, who can be against us? 
I don't mind negative criticisms and attacks. Amen. As long as I know that I'm standing with God, nothing shall harm me. Amen. Amen. Because with God, me with God, we are the most powerful. Amen. Whatever challenges, whatever hardships, whatever problems, as long as God is with me, then I have assurance that I am more than an overcomer. Amen. Amen. I am more than a victorious person. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You are the person. No wonder why you are going through this. Oh, I need to emphasize on this one. No wonder why you are feeling this strong pressure on you. This uh, demonic spiritual warfare coming with all power against your life. It is because you are the man. It is because you are the person. No wonder why this is all coming against you. Amen. Because you are that person. Oh, somebody, I feel like we should say, uh, truly, truly, let me be the one that God is seeking after, that God is looking for, that God is going to use to accomplish his divine purposes in my family, in my community, in my nation. Let me be the one. Amen. You are the person. No wonder why demonic powers are coming against you. Amen. No wonder why demons from all over the world are coming against you. Demons from Brisbane have failed. Now there is a coalition of demons. There is not only coalition in politics. Even in the demonic realm, there is coalition. <laughs> And it's interesting that <laughs> demons are more organized than us, children of God. Demons love one another. If I am a witch and I failed to kill you, sister, I will call on the demons from Congo to come and help me. Or from America. They have these connections. <laughs> <laughs> Demons work in unity. It's only us in church who are fighting. It's only us pastors who are fighting in church. And the believers who don't want to sit next to the other one. This sister can't sit next to the other sister. <laughs> it's only us, you see, believers, children of God. But demons. It's only as believers who cannot help one another. But demons, they help one another for the bad purpose. <laughs> demons will communicate that, I've been trying to kill, you see, that man. I've tried all my magic, all that I know from the devil I've failed. And you see, they are very in the unit. They'll say, oh, no, 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 no. So you've tried up to this level. I know I, I, I've got another tactic. <laughs> So let us unite these powers. <laughs> Do you, if God opens the eyes and see how witches are coming around us, you wouldn't believe it. You see, there are witches from here. There are witches from all over the world who know you, who know their name, who are fighting to bring you down, to destroy you, to kill you. But the good news is that as we are sharing the word of God, we are going to break it down in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. Now, I'm saying that the devil has no problem with us as long as we are not harming him. He's happy to live around us. If we are not harming him, he has no problem with us. We can eat, sleep with him, drive cars with him. He doesn't mind. The moment he will start minding when we start invading his territory when we start challenging his dominion and his powers and his authority, then he will stand up to fight. Amen. Now, the Bible says there is great joy in the city, but Simon is still hanging around. Now, the Bible, oh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now, the Bible says that Amen. The Bible says that as Philip continued preaching the gospel. Now, these people, the Bible says that they had believed that Simon was a great man. 
<laughs> that he was being used by the power of God. While this he was doing sorcery. Amen. And he had, he had, he had cast a spell over the city of Samaria. To me, it looks like he was controlling this city. Although there were people believing in God, but people were still under the yoke of demonic powers. Because these magicians, this sorcerer is working around in the city. And the Bible says that people are still believing in him. And they believed in him for a very long time. That he's a great man that he's helping them. That he's doing great things. Amen. Amen. That he's doing great things in the city of Samaria. Hallelujah. 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 I want to go back to John 4, 23. That woman, the hour is coming and now is that true worshippers oh, oh, will worship the Father. In truth, in the, in the spirit, amen. amen. That the people of Samaria, I know, they, there is, uh, uh, the hour is coming when they are going to worship the true God. When they are going to worship God in truth and in the spirit. Not worshiping, while they are still believing that a sorcerer is a great person from God. So it, I understand that Simon as a sorcerer has... Put on a yoke that is binding the whole city and making people from the whole city believing in him, following him. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. But as we are preaching the word of God, and as Philip preached the word of God, the Bible says that he came to a point as he's preaching the word of God, that Simon the sorcerer also believed in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The hour is coming that the people of Samaria should worship God in truth and in the spirit. The yoke of the devil laid against them by this sorcerer should be broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The bond of oppression and hardship that has been cast upon your life has to be broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah has to be broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Now, what I'm trying to understand here, brethren, the whole, <laughs> the, 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 you, see, the, 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 you see, the bottom line and what I'm trying to understand from this scripture here is that God... <laughs> God is sending Philip down. Oh, can I also say something, brethren? The Bible says that Philip went down to Samaria. You've got to go down and deep, even when it is difficult. Even when it, it is sounding and looking impossible. You've got to go down and deep in order to get to the bottom line and to the miracles that God is wanting you to be experiencing. Don't just sort of say that it's not working and you give up. You've got to go down deep to the point. Amen. Amen. Now, what I'm trying to understand here in this story is that God is sending Philip to Samaria to come against Simon so that the city of Samaria is set free from the bondage of this sorcerer whom everyone believed in him in the city. Amen. It sounds like people believed in him that he is someone great from God when he is only a magician, a, a sorcerer, a witch. <laughs> now what I'm trying to understand here is part of this persecution that arose in Jerusalem. It was serving a purpose for Philip to leave Jerusalem going down to Samaria so that he can go against and break the yoke that was brought on, placed by, on this city by Simon, who is a witch. Amen. 
Amen. But it was not a pleasing experience. Amen. Going through experiencing persecution, this was not a pleasing experience for the disciples and for Philip as well. Amen. But he was going through persecution for a purpose because he needed to get down to Samaria and complete the work that the Lord started in Samaria, saying that true worshipers will worship me in truth and in the spirit. Amen. 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 And as he preached, Simon believed. Amen. Simon believed. Regardless of the long time he had deceived the people, himself, not only the people he deceived, but the devil himself, but the witch himself, believed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And I want to preach this morning, this time, brethren, the, preaching the power of God to break the yoke of the devil against your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The yoke that is causing pain in your life, in your family, at your work, in your business, in your relationships. I want to send and speak the word of God that is being preached under the anointing of the Spirit of God to break the powers of the day for. And to leave you and leave you alone free in Jesus Christ, my name. Amen. 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 Philip is being sent down to Samaria to come against this witch who disturbed the lives of people, the whole city. Because this city had already been declared that true worshippers will worship God in spirit and in truth. But this man is taking all the whole city captive in his hands. There is a yoke. Amen. That has to be broken. Amen. 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 There is a yoke that has to be broken. There are powers of the devil that have to be broken. Amen. Against this church in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There are powers of the devil that have to be broken against your own life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There are powers of the devil that have to be broken against your marriage in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. There are powers of the devil that have been to be broken against your children in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. And for you to live free, victoriously, to the promises of God upon your life. Amen. Oh. Hmm. Amen. There are chains that have to be broken. There are strongholds that have to be broken. Amen. Amen. Strongholds are anything that are working against your life. Anything that is working against. Amen. The fulfillment of God's will in your life. Amen. Whether at a spiritual level, physical level, family level, whatever level, anything that is opposing God's will from being fulfilled in your life, that is a stronghold that has to be dealt with, that has to be broken in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Simon went down to Samaria to break this spirit down. And he preached till Simon himself surrendered his life and believed in Jesus, in the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Hallelujah. God is always with you in your pain. The presence of pain does not mean the absence of God. Philip went through persecution. God brought on persecution upon his life to provide direction. Amen. 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 God is always with us in our pain. Amen. God is always with us. In our pen. 
And if what? And if that thing is coming from God, amen, surely, if that pressure is coming from God, you will surely not be crushed, amen? If that pressure is coming from God, amen, and if God has a plan with your life, which means surely that pressure will not crush you. That pressure will not destroy you. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Brethren, let us see God. Let us take the opportunity to see God in each and every step of our life, in each and every moment and situation he takes us through, let us try to see God in that moment. Amen? Because he has promised he will never leave us alone. He will always be with us until the end of the times. Amen? Even until to the point that at the last breath of our life, God will always be with us. Amen. 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 He is with us. He is Jehovah Shammah. He is present in our situation. May God bless you.